While I was in grad school, I interned at a company called Eaton Corporation. And when I graduated, Eaton said, we will hire you, but we would like to place you in Southfield, Michigan, which is a suburb of Detroit. I didn't know a lot about Detroit, and so a lot of people told me, you know, you're gonna get shot, Detroit's a scary place, don't go there. But I was looking for a little bit of an adventure, and um, I kind of wanted to stretch myself uh, in that I haven't lived anywhere besides Minnesota. And so I said, what the hell, I'll go for it. So while I get to be pretty creative at my job at work, I still have to develop technologies that are very useful to Eaton. It has to make sense for Eaton to make that technology. And I thought, um, you know what, since I don't know anybody in this state, uh, I'll go check out this place called I3 Detroit. So I3 Detroit runs classes, and all classes are run by the members. So we encourage our members to sort of broadcast their skills to the membership and to the general public. When someone comes in and builds something they haven't done before for the first time, they kind of have this like first moment of like turning on the electronic board or you know taking the thing out of the laser cutter, and they go, this is really cool. I made this. For Valentine's Day this year, I wanted to really impress my new boyfriend at the time because he's a computer engineer. And I was Googling pictures and I found this um, design for a circuit board and I was like, this is something I can do. And it just kind of goes through some really pretty sequences. I'm actually really proud of it because it was the first uh, board that I made by myself. So traditionally these places have been called hacker spaces. Uh, the term hacker is sort of a misunderstood term. What hacker means uh, at a hacker space is someone who takes things apart, figures out how they work, makes it even better, or just somebody who wants to understand what makes things run. It's sort of having that curious drive. But a lot of people, when they hear the term hacker, they think of somebody stealing their bank account. So some people propose, let's just call these places maker spaces. I don't really see myself as a hacker. I actually joined this space because I really like to make stuff. I doodle and I paint. It's really great to be up here and watch people use stuff and how they use stuff so I can integrate it into my own work. I'm working on these like light boxes right now. I want to make some out of acrylic actually, so that like, the whole thing kind of glows, but these are my first prototypes to see how it would work. And then eventually, after I'm done with this, I'm gonna paint on the front of it to give it my flair, and then hopefully people buy it. So I guess I don't have altruistic motives for being here. <laughs> it's not like a pure love of the game. It's for a job. been back about a year, but for about four years before that, uh, I worked in Afghanistan. I've heard that referred to as hack Afghanistan conditions, a little harsh, not as comfortable as, as we might like. Uh, things aren't plenty, um, so that causes you to reach, you know, to, uh, to struggle a little bit to make things better for yourself. You do that, things get a little better, and it just builds momentum. If it was possible to have a place like this in uh, the place I worked, which was Kandahar, wow, you'd have really seen some things. They need a hacker space, maker space, whatever you like to call it there. Um, who knows, maybe one will form before uh, all is said and done. The maker mentality or the maker philosophy was really important to getting our society going and off the ground. It's gotten us through difficult times historically. And it's something uh, that unfortunately, uh, through our comfortable lives, we've slid away from a little bit. Everybody wants to see Detroit recover. 
one thing that needs to happen for that to happen is people need to take ownership in the city. They need to feel proud to be there and they need to feel like this is my city, I'm gonna make it awesome. People need to, to look at this city not as a broken city, like a broken cell phone. They can't just throw it away and just go, well, it's broken and we're just not gonna use it anymore. That sort of same empowerment is what maker spaces and hacker spaces uh, can give to people. Hopefully, some of that culture even rubs off into the people of Detroit. I3 Detroit gives people a place that sort of lets them have unrestricted creativity, right? You don't need to think about a business case. You don't need to think about why it's good for the company or uh, you know, a specific business unit. You can just say, wouldn't it be really cool to have a mind-controlled flamethrower? Oh shit, this is like... Oh yeah. end of the day, people build everything. Even if it's an industrial robot that builds something, you know. At some point down the line, someone had to build the robot that built the robot that built the robot, right? It's giving that power back to the people.